Avilio. Welcome, Wizards, Witches, and Nomads. My name's David Sicello, and thank you for taking the time out of your day and visiting my channel, Wands and Reviews. Charity Burbage was a witch born in Great Britain, and though her parentage is unknown, it is very possible that she is either a half-blood or even a pure-blood witch. And it's also unclear where she gained her magical education. But she could cast a non-corporal Patronus, so we know that she was good with charms. She also had a passion for muggle art and music. And she believed that muggles were not so different than wizarding kind. And she used that viewpoint in her teachings of muggle studies at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. She was very kind and passionate to all of those around her, even though some witches and wizards disliked her for her point of view as they were for a pure-blood society. But that did not stop her from promoting and tolerating the understanding of muggles. She even liked to wear muggle clothing more than magically designed clothes. After Lord Voldemort came back into power, the Daily Prophet published an article from Charity Burbage that upset many. She was abducted by Death Eaters and taken to Malfoy Manor, and they left a statement to be found that claimed that she had resigned. The many who knew her were suspicious about her sudden disappearance. At a gathering of selected pure blood Death Eaters, the abducted and now tortured Charity Burbage was suspended above their table, and Lord Voldemort accused her of polluting the minds of others with her pro-Muggle ideals. He vilified her beliefs, claiming that she was encouraging magical folk to mate with non-magical folk to eradicate and muddy up the bloodlines. This upset the pure blood Death Eaters at the meeting. Charity noticed Severus Snape sitting quietly at the table. She looked at him and begged him to help her. This amused some of the Death Eaters and they began laughing. Snape who was serving as an undercover agent, could not risk blowing his cover. Lord Voldemort laughed, and with a flash of green light from his wand, Charity Burbage's lifeless body fell onto the table. Snape, with hidden remorse, could do nothing as Nagini started to feed on Charity Burbage's body. Nobody knew of Charity Burbage's whereabouts after she had gone missing. Some speculated that due to the article published in the Daily Prophet, she feared retribution and went into hiding. It is unknown if Charity Burbage's true fate was ever revealed after the defeat of Lord Voldemort or did her fate die with Snape? Today, I would like to share with you my non-official wand that I created for Charity Burbage. Here is my non-official wand for Charity Burbage. Made out of a cypress wood with an ash handle and unicorn tail hair core, this wand measures in at 14.5 inches in total length. The brown cypress shaft is inserted into a lighter color ash handle that has a round ball end.
this wand can be easily concealed within Charity Burbage's pocket or up her sleeve when she's among muggles. A simplistically designed wand, this wand has a nice balance to it and is easy to grip. It's light and swishy, and I believe that Charity Burbage could cast her charms without any problems. This is my non-official wand for Charity Burbage. Although Charity Burbage met a horrific end, I like to believe that Severus Snape was truly a friend of hers and though he could not help her at the time, that eventually he told somebody of her demise before he met his own. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I truly hope you enjoyed this non-official wand video today. If you did, please click on that thumbs up button, and if you would, subscribe to my channel. I really do appreciate it, and remember, to share this video with your family and all of your friends. Thank you, and keep on holding to your beliefs, no matter what anyone may say to you.